So again, welcome to the Polish room. As I mentioned before, it's not the oldest room. We'll hear about older rooms a little bit later in the tour, and you will hear more about Manugi and Dikran Tumajan. My colleague will be talking about it. But my task here is to tell you briefly a little bit about this room. So first of all, it was dedicated on May 3rd, 1986, and I have three members from the Polish-American community who really know probably more about this room than I do. Um, so it was dedicated on May 3rd, 1986, and May 3rd is a very important date for Poland. It's one of the Polish most important national holidays, the Constitution Day. Who uh, did the fund uh, fundraising for for the uh, for the room? Because it's it was expensive room, and so it did. So it was done by different Polish American societies. But the main fundraising was done by the Polish uh, Polish ethnic festival organization, which doesn't uh, exist anymore. So let me tell you a little bit about what we have in the room. First of all, most of what you see here was brought here from Poland, and it's interesting if you think about it because it was time of communism. Uh, Polish, um, Polish Americans were at, at least ambivalent about communist Poland, to say, to say at least ambivalent, but still they understood that that's, that's the way to go, to bring these artifacts from Poland. So, so what we have here, we really have um, a showcase of what Polish people are proud of, what they want to um, attach their identity uh, to. Here we have Polish kings, we have 18, actually they are, um, we read uh, there that uh, 18, that we have here 18 Polish kings, but there are 17 kings and one prince really, because Mieszka I was not the king, but we have, this is about half of the, of the kings which Poland had, the last king was uh, Stanisław August Poniatowski, he was crowned in 1764. This mosaic is uh, made of marble and granite, and all of this was brought from Poland was assembled here. So, so this is our north wall. If we look at the south wall, what we see on the south wall, we see a tribute to Nicolas Copernicus, the great Polish astronomer who was born in Torun, and this represents uh, the solar system, and there's Copernicus on the right. If we maybe we can move towards, uh, towards that wall, and wh while we are moving, we can pay attention to the ceiling. Because ceiling here is a very, it's very interesting. Ceiling is wooden. It is patterned on a similar ceilings which come from the, the time of Renaissance, and you have a few of them in the Vado Castle. But of course, this what this ceiling represents. You can see a few paintings, portraits. One of them is Jan Janusz Sobieski, his generals. We have Polish eagle. So when we move forward, we also see that on the floor we have some rafts. There is supposed to be like looking like Turkish rugs. Poles traditionally love Turkish rugs, so that's why we have those. These are not, I mean they also, I believe, came from Poland, but of course they have to be fireworks. We, we have here some of the original furniture made of, of oak. And if you see some of this original furniture still, still survive. The uh, tables are in not such a bad shape. This is one of the original chairs. You see it's uh, in a very sh set shape at this point, but still after 30 years and a lot of use. And this is leather. So it was leather upho upholstered. We had chairs, armchairs here. Also pieces like the piece at, at the end, which we see. On the left, if you look at the left, um, we see in this little niche, we see three tapestries, and they represent Polish devotion and importance of religion in Poland. So on the left you have a uh, black Madonna who faded a little bit, this tapestry faded a little bit, so original, so it's patterned on the painting, which is the most holy icon uh, in Poland, which is called Black Madonna, comes from the 14th century. Częstochowa, no. yes, Madonna of Częstochowa, exactly. And she has, it's easy to recognize her, she always has two cuts on her cheek. In the middle we have Polish eagle, and on the right we have the Sigismund Chapel in Kraków. That is a part of uh, uh, the Wawel Cathedral, beautiful Renaissance chapel, the resting place of the uh, last kings from the Agionian dynasty. When we move further, we see on the left, 
three really beautiful stained glass windows which commemorate in the, in the middle is Marie Curie, although uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie, uh, the outstanding, fascinating uh, researcher and a woman because she has um, she received not one but two Nobel Prizes in her life, one in chemistry, one in physics, for her uh, pioneering work in uh, um, radiology. So she discovered radium and polonium, and in the and her and the family her uh, after her husband uh, her name is Curie after her husband and Curie family hold the absolute record as far as uh, number of Nobel prizes per family they have five so it's she to her husband and there was her daughter and I, I believe her son-in-law so we do like five nobody and of course she if we think about her the first woman to be a professor. Um, at the University of Paris, the first woman to, to receive Nobel Prize, the, f the only woman to receive two Nobel Prizes. So it's extremely, extremely uh, interesting, fascinating, and I hope inspiring too, uh, record. Um, and on the left and on the right, we have two generals, Polish generals who came to America during the revolution to aid that uh, cause of American freedom, and on the left we have General Kazimir Pułaski, who died in Savannah, Georgia, that's where he is buried, died in 1779. On the right we have Tadeusz Kościuszko, who was, uh, who was a civil engineer, that's what we see in his hands, uh, um, and what, what we see in his hands, I think, is a straw, a plan for the West Point, mm. because Kościuszko designed the fortifications for West Point, today we have West Point Academy. He, was, he finished the war in the rank of brigadier the general, was given a state in Ohio with slaves. His, his plans were, after his death, his estate supposed to be sold and <clears throat> money used for emancipation of the slaves didn't, didn't happen. But that's what he wanted. So he finished, uh, he, he finished his American um, career in the military, went back to, to Poland. Kazimierz Płaski, as I said, died in America, died in Savannah. He was known as, uh, uh, for his courage. And his, uh, his accomplishment and his contribution to the American Revolution was also in the sphere of uh, uh, cavalry. That was not the best sentence, but he wanted to uh, introduce cavalry to America. At that point, infantry was really the main, uh, the main way uh, how war was fought. And he was quite successful in building up this uh, uh, cavalry. He's known as the father of the father of American cavalry. Yeah. Yes. So if we so uh, so we move on. We are almost done. I know that we started late. So here is the newest addition to the room. This is a tribute to Polish Americans and Polish American musician uh, Ted Gomułka, whom you see in, in these photos, is was a very accomplished musician. Played trumpet in addition to other other instruments. And he and many others went to Cass Tech, where they got very good education, sometimes follow at Wayne State or other universities, were able to play polkas, obereks, and other, other uh, Polish uh, tunes uh, at, at Polish weddings, for instance, but also play jazz, classical music, American popular music, very versatile very versatile musicians and one of them, one of the most accomplished ones was Ted Gomuka. Related to President Gomuka? Uh, no. I think uh, not to, yes, it, it apparently was. He was, okay. Uh, apparently was, uh, but I don't know the story. Okay. So we, I will talk about Copernicus. Outside of the room I will, because we need to finish, we have to move to next room. I just, I just will tell you that outside of the room you will see etchings which represent uh, geography of Poland, the beauty of Poland, some, some Polish dances, so you can see them there, and also crest, crest which shows this crest of Poland and Lithuania, because for few centuries in Polish history, Poland was, and Lithuania were one sort of political organism. Okay, so thank you very much for visiting the Polish room. Thank you. Two years after this video recording was made, the Polish Room acquired yet another work of art, a beautiful bust of Marie Curie created by a local artist Evelyn Bachorski Bowman. The sculpture, a gift from Linda and Stephen Płochocki, was installed in the room 
on August 28, 2018.